The holidays are a time for friends, family, festivities, and food. Lots and lots of food. But what did people serve at holiday parties in decades past, in addition to mainstays like eggnog, gingerbread houses, and sugar cookies? The answers may challenge your Christmas spirit. Today, we're going to take a look at 15 crazy vintage food recipes to spice up your holiday party. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other holiday food topics you would like to hear about. Okay, time to let us help you bring a little kitsch to your kitchen. First up, we have the Holiday Fondue, brought to you by the good people at Orida Potatoes and Armor Star Ham. This so-called fondue is apparently more fun than the average fondue, because it includes tater tots, which is pretty hard to argue with. To make it, you'll need tangy cheese sauce, tender cubes of Armor Star Ham, and a whole mess of Orida tater tots. Just heat up the ham and tots in an oven for 12 to 15 minutes, heat your cheese sauce into a pan, and then pour it into a fondue dish. According to the advertisement, if you serve the fondue, your reputation as a great party giver is made. Well, we appreciate their enthusiasm. We recommend that if you are worried about your party giver rep, you should think about hosting an open bar, in addition to all the tater tots and cubed ham. The New England Yam Bake is brought to you by Kraft Marshmallows and Princella Yams, so you can probably guess at least two of the ingredients. The rest includes pineapple slices, flour, brown sugar, cinnamon salt, chopped nuts, and margarine. Combine all that, bake for 25 minutes at 350 degrees, and you wind up with something very much like a sweet potato pie that serves six to eight people. That actually sounds pretty good. Wonder when the next neighborhood yam bake is. Speaking of which, you're probably wondering what the New England in the name New England Yam Bake refers to. Well, yams aren't New England, and neither is the mallow plant, from which marshmallows derive their name. And both Kraft and the Princella Company are headquartered in Illinois, which is decidedly not New England. Just ask any Bears fan. So long story short, the name doesn't seem to refer to anything. It's just a play on a New England clam bake. Although there better not be any clams in this thing, or we riot. Next, from the makers of Cool Whip, the stuff that's almost but not quite whipped cream, comes the Winter Wonder Log. Although, generally speaking, a food log is never something you should have to wonder about. Naturally, the recipe begins with three cups of thawed Cool Whip, then calls for a cup of cold milk, exactly 38 thin chocolate wafers, and a package of Jell-O pistachio-flavored instant pudding and pie filling. Don't you dare put 39 thin chocolate wafers in there, unless you want to ruin the entire party. The blurb on the recipe boasts that nothing could be easier, but the picture of the finished product beside that blurb looks like something cooked up by a professional pastry chef, so proceed at your own risk. If you do give it a shot and you follow the directions correctly, the whole thing should turn out looking like a green and brown striped loaf that's coated from end to end in Cool Whip. It takes about three hours to prepare and should serve eight, which means plenty of pistachio Cool Whip log for everyone. What holiday party would be complete without cheese cones? If you're wondering what the hell cheese cones are, the answer is allegedly a festive new way to serve spreads made with Hellman's mayonnaise. Mmm, mayonnaise and cheese hors d'oeuvres are sure to keep the party going until well after bedtime. For this one, you mix four three-ounce packages of cream cheese with a third of a cup of mayonnaise, a half teaspoon of oregano, and an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Chill the mixture, then, and we're serious here, mold it into a pine cone shape and garnish it with nuts. The final product should look like a mayonnaise blob with nuts all over it that vaguely resembles a pine cone. And if all that sounds yummy to you, there's also a version made with cheddar cheese, horseradish, Tabasco sauce, and of course, more mayo. I guess variety is the spice of life, or the mayonnaise of life, I guess. The recipe for Raisin Kitty Bars is brought to you by the California Raisin Advisory Board. Weird History food viewers might recognize that as the same organization responsible for the California Raisins, the popular claymation characters who sang Motown hits and commercials throughout the 1980s. Yeah, that was a thing. Gen Zers, you just have to take our word for it. The Raisin Kitty Bars are essentially cookies that contain raisins, cherries, coconut, and pecans that take about 45 minutes to make. 
Then you shake them like little gingerbread men, which, scientifically speaking, makes them more fun to eat. Have you ever been drinking a Dr. Pepper and thought to yourself, this would be so much better if it was boiling hot? If so, we've got some good news for you. In 1968, the Dr. Pepper Company promoted a unique twist on spiced cider and other warm wintertime beverages by suggesting their customers serve Dr. Pepper steaming hot. The recipe is pretty simple. You just heat up some Dr. Pepper in a saucepan until it begins to steam, then pour it into a glass over a thin slice of lemon. That doesn't sound half bad. Is there booze in it? Well, I guess that's up to you. The recipe is illustrated with a picture of a snowman holding a piping hot glass, despite the clear threat it poses to his well-being. A testament to the irresistible taste of hot Dr. Pepper. The peppermint popcorn tree might sound more like an Arbor Day treat, but take one look at it and it's clear this bizarre popcorn and marshmallow concoction is a Christmas miracle. This recipe, brought to you by Caro Syrup, starts with 14 cups of popcorn. You'll then have to prepare a candy mixture that's mostly Caro Syrup, sugar, and vanilla. Then throw in 32 regular-sized marshmallows and a teaspoon of peppermint flavoring. Add in your popcorn and stir. Once that's all mixed up, you press it into a pan and wait for it to cool. Then cut it into several pieces of four different sizes and stack them largest to smallest. Finally, decorate the unique confection with candies and candles, and serve. If you do it right, you should wind up with something that looks vaguely like a miniature marshmallow-coated Christmas tree. If you're planning on trying out this slightly complicated recipe, note that caro syrup is also widely known as a home remedy for constipation, so you might want to stick close to home base, or give it away to coworkers you don't like. Lots of people have coffee with dessert, but have you ever had coffee for dessert? Okay, sure, there's always good old-fashioned coffee cake, but if you've ever wanted to try something a little more outside the box, the people at Martinson's Coffee have got you covered. They came up with a recipe for something they call Coffee Charlotte, which kind of sounds like a pop-punk band hitting middle age. To prepare, soak a tablespoon of gelatin in a half a cup of strong cold coffee, then add a cup of strong hot coffee, Throw in four tablespoons of sugar and stir. Once the mixture is cooled, add two egg whites, a pinch of salt, and a quarter pint of whipped cream. Pour that into a mold and then chill. When that's done, you'll have six servings of what looks basically like coffee-flavored jello. Thanks, but I'll pass. Martinson's recipe included a long defunct order form for 22 more coffee-based desserts. We have no way of knowing what those may have been, but we can recklessly throw out some guesses. Coffee cobbler, maybe, or hot coffee pie. Along with the holiday fun do, Campbell Eggs proves that if you name your dish a charming pun, nobody will think too hard about what's actually in it. Brought to you by the fine folks at Campbell Soup, Campbell Eggs are scrambled eggs, holiday style. What does that mean? Well, it apparently just means scrambled eggs with a can of Campbell soup dumped into the mix. The recipe calls for eight eggs, a dash of pepper, two tablespoons of butter, and a can of cream of chicken soup. And if cream of chicken doesn't spread enough holiday cheer for you, cream of celery, cream of mushroom, cream of potato, or New England clam chowder can also be substituted. Kind of feels like they spent way more time coming up with a name than designing the recipe. Soupy eggs don't have much to do with the holidays, unless you're drunk at Waffle House on Christmas Eve. Del Monte's party fruit basket recipe is the ultimate holiday fruitcake. It calls for one large angel food cake, four cups of drained and chilled Del Monte fruit cocktail, fruit cocktail syrup, some unflavored gelatin, water, sugar, lemon juice, almond extract, and whipped cream. Despite the name, you won't need an actual basket. The cake is the basket. First, soften the gelatin in water, add it to the syrup, and throw in the sugar and lemon juice. Stir that up and add the fruit and almond extract. Then chill the mixture until it's almost set. Finally, cut the center out of the cake and spoon the mixture into the hole. Chill that overnight, garnish it with whipped cream, and voila! You have got yourself a party fruit basket that will likely be politely ignored by most of your party goers, just like the vegetable tray. 
From the makers of pistachio-flavored Jello comes a dessert that sounds like someone desperately throwing together a dessert using whatever was left in the cupboard. Jello ginger ale salad is the perfect addition to any holiday get-together, particularly ones you don't intend to be invited back to next year. Dissolve one package of lime jello into a cup of water. Add in some ginger ale and then chill. Once it thickens, fold in a cup of drained, diced sweetened peaches, some diced celery, and chopped nuts. Pour that into a one-quart mold, chill until firm, and then serve it on lettuce with either mayonnaise or whipped cream mayonnaise, which is a real thing we in no way made up. The finished dessert sounds like a mix between jello, potato salad, and ambrosia fruit salad. The recipe claims your whole family will love it, but it fails to cite any sources. Happy holidays and bon appetit. So what do you think? Which of these recipes would you like to try? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.